today's watch review, we're going to be talking about the Invicta Venom 0967. So let's get right into it. Starting off with price, you can find the 0967 in the ballpark of around two to three hundred dollars. Obviously, MSRP, because it's an Invicta, is going to be probably in the thousands, but don't pay attention to MSRP. Focus on what the actual retail price is, and in my experience, it's been around the two to three hundred dollar range. And as always, let's do a quick 360. It's always good to know what we're looking at here. There's the clasp, and there's the case back. For dimensions, it is definitely a large watch. So without the crown, we're looking at around 52 millimeters. And with the crown, more like 60. And then as far as case thickness goes, I don't know, this is gonna be hard to do, but I'm getting I'm getting just under 22 millimeters. So not the thickest or and largest Invicta that I've dealt with, but it's definitely up there. For weight in grams, we're looking at 403 grams or 14 and 1 8 ounces, so just under a pound. As far as specifications go, for the movement, we're looking at the Swiss Ronda 5040D movement. Perfectly reliable movement. Uh, it's quartz, so you know, very budget friendly and affordable pr to produce those types of movements. And then as far as water resistance, we're looking at a thousand meters of water resistance. That seems a little bit high uh, to me at least, and I, I don't really have a means to test that. But that's what they say, so I'm not going to think that they're lying to me, but it, it just seems a little bit high. Next, we've got this 120 click unidirectional bezel. I do very much like the shape of this bezel because for people like me with larger, thicker gorilla fingers, operating smaller things like watches is sometimes not always the easiest thing to do. So the fact that there is larger watches out there like this um, it just it makes it a much more pleasing experience for me. Um, I will say that I have been having a little bit of trouble getting the zero to line up perfectly with the 12 o'clock indice. Not by a lot, it's just by a hair, but my OCD, it bothers me just a little bit and I'm just sharing my experience with you. Along with the bezel, we do have a screw down crown and screw down pushers right here. And again, because everything about this watch is so big, it makes the operation of these pushers very pleasant, for me at least. So you unscrew them, and then when you push the button, you operate the chronograph, and you can see at the six o'clock position is your one-tenth of a second sub-dial, which actually seconds as a 10-hour measuring tool. So basically, after 30 minutes have passed, because this sub-dial right here only measures up to 30 minutes, um, it'll continue to measure time up to 10 hours and that'll be measured at the six o'clock sub dial. I never knew that. I just found that out by doing some more research on the Ronda 5040. So just something cool. We also have loom applied on all of the hands and indices. And in this case, the loom is done fantastically. You know, it's not okay. It's done really, really well. Because normally, in my experience, Invicta's loom is horrible. I, I haven't had any good experience on any of their pro divers, grand divers, or anything with trite night. I don't know which loom they're using on this one, but you can see on the screen how sharp and clear that's coming through. I don't know if it's because of this tinted crystal and it's magnifying the loom, or you know maybe they just finally used a respectable loom, but good job. And of course, the piece de resistance is that flame fusion tinted crystal. Some of you might not be a fan of it, but for me, I think that is just one of the most beautiful crystals I've ever seen. Uh, I specifically got this watch for the crystal because I personally don't like Venoms at all. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the way their case is designed. I don't like how they feel on the wrist. 
but that crystal is what did it for me and I will I will look past all the things that I dislike about the Venom because of how beautiful the crystal looks. As far as the bracelet goes, you know, I'm not a huge fan of the style, but just on an unbiased opinion as far as the quality goes, it's fantastic. And I think this is really where Invicta excels at, is the budget-friendly prices that they have, but the quality of their bracelets just always seem to be much higher than more expensive watch brands. I mean, you might not like that opinion, but just, I don't know, that's just how I feel. It, it seems like, you know, I will spend a couple hundred bucks on a Seiko or Citizen and their bracelet will just be, you know, very, I don't know, not flimsy, but it's just kind of just cheap steel, whereas my Invicta bracelets always feel much thicker, much more dense and much more substantial. And, you know, things like the clasp. For me, one thing I, one way that I judge a bracelet is the quality of the clasp. And if it's a milled steel clasp like this, I automatically just assume that it is of a higher quality and it seems like I get a lot of more a lot more milled clasps from my Invictas at a cheaper price than I do with other watch brands just something I've, I've observed and the uh, bracelet is very similar to my Oakley GMT that I recently did a video on it's kind of like an armadillo armor style bracelet So I know I said a lot of bad things about the Venom, you know, earlier I mentioned I don't like the way it feels, I don't like the way it looks, and I kind of want to backtrack before you take this as a negative review. Um, when I say I don't like the way it looks, you know, really what I meant is that it's just not really my cup of tea. However, it looks extremely unique and interesting, in my opinion, and I don't think you can really deny the fact that it is a unique and strange looking watch and because of that that is why it continues to capture my attention and whenever I see a picture of it even though it's not my cup of tea my attention will be drawn to it because of how interesting and unique it looks my biggest gripe or issue with the Venom is the style of the case and if you can see right here you can see how these lugs they just point straight down, basically saying that unless your wrist is this wide or this thin, um, it's just not going to sit comfortably on the top of your wrist. And it's going to have to ride either on one side or the other. Because hardly anybody with a thicker wrist is going to be able to comfortably wear this on top of their wrist. I don't believe I did a wrist shot actually, so here you go. But what I was talking about before is, see my wrist goes past these lugs just a little bit, but because of the way the case is shaped, I'm trying to capture this, it just kind of points directly down. So either it's going to sit on one side of my wrist or the other. I mean, I can get it to sit right on top, but I can feel those lugs on the top of my wrist. and it's just not the most pleasant experience and I don't know what they were thinking when they designed this you know it would have been much better to just remove this part and have it have a have a smoother transition into the bracelet so that a larger group of people could could enjoy this watch but I don't know I guess that's just how they designed it so pretty much to sum it all up the Invicta Venom 0967 is big, it's bold, and it really doesn't care what you think about it. And because of that, I appreciate it. Um, you know, at this point in my watch collecting um, journey, I appreciate watches that are not the same as everything else in the market. And for me, I don't really focus too much on movements, so the movement doesn't have to be super precise or some super luxurious expensive movement I'm fine with just simple Swiss quartz movements um, so right now I'm more focusing on value and style and this might not be my style but it is a unique style and so because of that 
I very much appreciate the Invicta Venom. One thing that I cannot emphasize enough though is just how beautiful these tinted flame fusion crystals are. You know, just in my opinion, I think Invicta just really got this one right. I think it does a great job of uh, magnifying the dial and it just looks absolutely beautiful and stunning by the naked eye when you see the different shades of blue and red and orange. I don't know, it really is a flame fusion crystal. You know, it looks like there's a flame burning within it. So that pretty much sums it up. I really got nothing else to say. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Um, as far as whether or not I would recommend it to you, you know, at this point, it's really just a personal preference. Uh, I can't deny the fact that I really do like this watch. Maybe not in personal style, but just uniqueness and, you know, how much fun it is. And isn't that really what this is all about, is enjoying the journey of watch collecting and having fun with it, regardless of what other people think. So, you know, to that end, hell yeah, I recommend the Venom because, again, it is just a fun watch. So, anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that I can help you with your next watch purchase. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Alright, bye.